Yo, how's it going, guys? This is Christian Loza with How It's Done Podcast, and I'm here with the one and only Mike Kozil. How's it going, man? What's up, bro? Doing good. <laughs> All right, so for those watching that aren't familiar with what, what you do, uh, tell us what you do. Um, I guess shoot videos. Let's keep oh, yeah. it simple. That's yeah. cool, man. So uh, how'd you first get into taking photos and making videos? Um, I guess in high school, I joined um, Yearbook to kind of do something extracurricular oh yeah and uh took photos and then eventually that led to video and i just fell in love with it yeah. that's cool that's cool man was that was that literally like your first time picking up a camera um i mean maybe a few weeks before school actually started i uh bought a camera like over the summer and just like took photos in my neighborhood oh, you know cool, like man. nothing no big deal but yeah just basically. like taking photos of your friends and stuff like that yeah and just like trees and stuff just like <laughs> random stuff yeah that's awesome man so what was when you first started shooting what was what was your uh setup like back then my first camera was a well my first dslr was a d40 a nikon with, and uh, with the kit lens oh yeah yeah and uh how, how long were you shooting with that thing um until i got into video oh yeah so i'd say maybe like six months oh okay six and, or seven and months. what was your first video setup uh, I don't even remember, but it was one of those Sony handy cams with the flip out screen. Oh, okay. And I went to the Brooklyn Banks. It's like a BMX skate spot in New York and someone jacked it. Oh, so, damn. And yeah. what did you replace it with another one or did you? No, upgrade? no. So I was like, when that dude stole it, I was like full blown, like into it. Like, I know this is what I want to do. So I got a DVX 100. Oh, it's a Panasonic. Yeah. yeah. It's a, uh, it's like a little better than the VX. Oh, okay. But I like at that time I was only doing action sports, so I got like an action sports related one. And what kind of stuff so, were you like shooting uh, back then with, with that when when you started getting into video? Just like BMX and skating. Oh, cool, man. Yeah. So, you went you went to college at, at Drexel University in Philly. Tell us about that. Um, it was sick, dude. Oh yeah. Yeah, I like. Well, what do you want to know about what, it? Just, uh, like, just tell us about like your experience there, like what you majored in and stuff like that. Oh, so I majored in film, um, but the school had like a focus on making you do like a lot of liberal arts stuff so i still had to do like science and math and oh all like all the all the gen ed classes yeah all the yeah. gen ed stuff but um it was really cool it was a really like technical school so i had to do like film theory shit but i also had to do like shooting classes and lighting classes okay. and producing and all that so i kind of got to like try every even though i knew i wanted to be in camera department i still had to like direct yeah so they so they that. made sure you were like well-rounded or whatever. yeah yeah and like you could be someone who's like oh i know i never want to produce and then when you're forced to do it you might be like oh i actually I really actually like this, like this. Yeah. yeah that's so, cool man. yeah and it also gave me an idea of like you even had to take an acting class oh wow to like how did how do you do with that i was terrible bro i was terrible <laughs> i'm like really shy so that's cool man it's kind of so how, how long how long did you do like you finished it out you did like the whole four years and, yeah i did yeah. four years um what, and you just did you, you just majored in like film or yeah yeah, yeah. Um, my school had a um, like a co-op program so you had to do an internship oh okay somewhere. yeah yeah so I did a six month internship here in LA and that was awesome that's awesome that was like real I guess industry experience so. so so you did you did an internship and then you came back and did a co-op right is that how it goes so my sophomore summer i came here and just did classes oh okay and then junior year you do your internship so i did a six-month internship awesome and then i went back to philly for senior year and what was and what was that like the internship yeah like what they have you what they have you do and, and that sort of thing oh bro trigger <laughs> it was crazy um so the company was a production company who um, some of their clients are like Applebee's and like the U.S. Navy. Oh, like, cool. Like all those like join the Navy commercials you see on TV. It was all done by them. And all that stuff. Yeah. So like I had to do some really weird stuff. Like one time they wanted to do a shoot in Ireland and they wanted a bunch of reindeer. So I had to call a farm in Ireland and ask if we could rent their reindeer. What? And like all this random stuff. But... So, I got, so were they having you like plan out all the stuff and, and yeah, yeah they were having me do like a t like um so like the directors who were like um signed to the production company yeah someone would come in and be like yo jaguar wants a commercial someone send over a treatment so they would make us gather all of the photos for the treatment oh wow so the guy would be like i want to do a scene in an airplane hangar 
but we have to shoot within like 100 miles of LA. So go find me every single airplane <laughs> hangar within 100 miles. So and I'm sure doing all that got you like aware of what it entailed to you know, oh, put yeah. together like a production or a video. Yeah, also. I got to like see these people's treatments and I got to see like the chain of command and like when it goes from the client to the pre-production to production and all that. Like, and, and did doing that uh, make you realize exactly like what you wanted to do in the industry or were you still unsure at that point? No, I was, even before I went to college, I knew like I wanted to be in camera department. Oh, okay, yeah. Because like I loved, for lack of a better word, like painting the image, like yeah. being the one to make the image. So I knew I didn't want to direct because I'm like not good at talking to people. And <laughs> I knew I didn't want to deal with money because I'm not like great with numbers. Right. So I like knew camera department is what I wanted. So to that do. was like your perfect fit. Yeah. Or whatever. But cool. like at that internship, I still had to do a lot of not camera department stuff. But all of that translated into eventually like what I'm doing now. That's cool. one way or another. That's awesome, you know? man. Yeah, I, I'm I'm always a good like or an advocate for doing when you're in school, taking like an internship or a co-op or, or just so you can learn exactly what it is. Oh yeah, you absolutely. Do. Yeah, because a lot of people who don't have the luxury of doing that they just get like thrown into their first job and it's like shit, you're just like oh shit shit just got real right now <laughs> that and like if you don't like it you it's like to like if you don't like it you have to now find a new job exactly like you're doing yeah. an internship it's, it's, it, has a, like it, it has an end and you're just yeah. and you can decide whether you like you're like yo i haven't started real life yet i can like <laughs> yeah, figure can something else re out redo <laughs> yeah so i gotta ask what's your opinion on going to college to learn cinematography does it help do you think it helps you like land the job in the industry or do you think there's enough information on the internet to learn what you need to learn like on your own it really all depends on like I don't like it's a vague question just because it all really depends on what you want to do yeah you know like so the the biggest perks for me going to school were the people I met and like being able to screw Coll up. collaborating yeah. yeah collaborating and like a lot of the people I went to school with are now doing amazing things so like there's a lot of people that like if I need to I can get a favor or like yeah. Just kind of keep up with all these people who are also you yeah, know, yeah. doing well. And are you staying in touch with people you went to school yeah, with? Yeah, so many yeah. people. Like that's a lot awesome. of my best friends in school are here in LA. That's and cool. Like, that's e everyone like. found their way out here. Yeah, yeah. So I mean like my friends who I'm going out with tonight are all friends that you know, awesome. I went to school with. Yeah, and I'm sure you like, you know, they hook you up with the gigs and you hooked them up with gigs and Oh, whatever. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's cool, dude. Um, but the other big perk of going to school is you can screw up and there's no real yeah, repercussions, yeah. you yeah. know? Like, because if you screw up on a set with a client, You're there's like a chance done. <laughs> no one on that crew will hire you again. Wow. But in school, it's like, all right. It's a learning experience. Exactly. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. So you, you, were a, you were a camera operator for Drexel's TV series off campus. Can you tell us about that and what you did uh, for that? And was that your first experience with professional filmmaking? Um, if anyone going to Drexel watches this, you need to do TV series because it is seriously the most <laughs> beneficial class you can take at that school. Yeah. Because it's literally a TV show. Yeah. And you pick your position and you l do that job. Like, it's that straightforward. So, like, cam opping on that show, I was one of three cam ops and, like, industry standards like everyone's got walkies everyone's doing equipment pulls the day before there's shot lists there's a script like you really learn your role and how that entire just like environment is moving and how everyone's yeah. you know doing their jobs and, and so how like, on how important everything is right? how important everything is and like like lingo like the same lingo we learned on set is the real lingo people use you know out here yeah so it was definitely the most beneficial thing I did at school. That's cool, man. Yeah. And, and what was your, uh, what exactly was uh, it that you were doing uh, for, for the TV series when you were on, when you were on set? So junior year, I was a cam op and I was literally A cam, B cam or C cam. And oh, wow. um, the day or two days before the DP would send out the shot list with a diagram. So like, here's the scene we're shooting. For example, it's like two people doing a podcast at a table. Yeah. Your A cam, A cam's in the center give me like a medium wide shot and you basically just go over all of that gotcha and then senior year I got promoted to DP so I was the one going on location scouts with the director and the producer and figuring out like okay we can set up lights here we can't set up lights here I had to do the diagrams like everything wow and it was so worth it because that stuff just when you have that much planning ahead of time when you jump into it everything just goes so much smoother yeah you know. Everybody knows their role. You know what you have to do, and mm -hmm. it's and it just it's smooth. 
there's with, way less yeah. um, surprises. Was there a lot of takes with uh, do, with a doing lot, that? Yeah. A lot, yeah. Yeah, and like whether you redo a take because talents messed up their line or maybe somebody messed up their shot, like there's different take. There's many takes for many different reasons. Yeah. But it's always a good feeling when you don't have to redo a take because it's your fault. You know. <laughs> yeah, you're like, all right, I'll just do the same thing I did again. I did a I did a music video once where I was the assistant cameraman, so I had to pull focus. Yeah. And it was at night on a 100 millimeter lens, opened at like 1.8, oh, and it was wow. a really fast dolly move into the person's face. Yeah. And I had to pull focus, and every time I screwed up, the director would yell out like, "Redo for focus!" And it <laughs> oh was, my I was it was like 20 degrees out, and I was sweating my balls off. Oh, I man. was like, "What music video was that for?" It was um, Modern Baseball's Your Graduation. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, shout and out the- Kyle Thrash, the director <laughs> killed it. Did Modern Baseball go to your school, right? It did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember I, I I found that out when I was uh, when I was doing research on you. I was like, "Whoa, that's kind of cool." Yeah. So Kyle, the director, was really good friends with Modern Baseball, and he just. He's like so good at what he does, and he just wrote these amazing treatments ideas for their songs, and just like brought Drexel students onto the set. That's awesome. So, and that was around the time when they were like blowing up, right? Yeah, that was like right before the huge blow up. That was like a few months or weeks before they headlined Electric Factory. Wow. Yeah. Did, and did, did you ever go out and like film any of their like like shows or anything, or was it just strictly like? Uh, yeah. So my there? friend Eric Tady who also does a lot of um, stuff in that whole pop punk realm. Yeah. Um, was doing, I think we were shooting a live show for Man Overboard. Oh, okay, yeah, so I, I know that, yeah. Same thing like TV series, like you're A camp, B camp, or C camp, you're on this side of the stage, give me a close up shot. These are the like most important songs, so make sure for these songs you roll on the entire song. Yeah. And it's like, and then the editor will just cut through multicam. That's pretty cool, man. That's I'm sure that was a really good experience. <laughs> it was, and that was another great perk of going to Drexel because all these kids are bringing other students onto the sets because they know everyone's hungry and willing to work just to get the experience. Yeah, that's so. awesome. That's awesome that they were around there to give people like that opportunity to do work and stuff because that's like real work. Yeah, no, Kyle, since graduating, has done a lot of really big videos, and I've been lucky enough to, you know, have him ask me to help out on a couple yeah. videos just because you know we all went to school together yeah and that's a really good connection build that relationship yeah. yeah that's awesome so tell us from after you graduate after you graduated from college tell us from there on how your career shaped up i know you were you were you were born and grew up on the on the east coast and a couple of years ago you decided to make the move out to, to the west coast so just like tell us how that came to be and how your like career shaped up after your move so um, right when I graduated, I was chilling in Jersey for a little while. Um, me and Anthony Purcell, shout out Halcyon, we were going to get a studio together to do in-house car stuff and stuff like that. And I'd come out here for my internship, so I knew I loved LA. Yeah. But my whole family's on the East Coast. Everyone I know is on the East Coast. So I was kind of there for a year. And then I got hired to do this documentary where we flew around the states interviewing a couple people yeah and one of our interviews was in LA and my friends who I graduated with had come out here already so we all linked up together and they were just like dude like you need to come out here like we know that you'll network you'll love your way. it and yeah yeah like because I love music I love you know filmmaking and the music and it's industry all out is here. out here yeah. yeah so I was like screw it I'll make the move and that summer I did a road trip and so you had to tell Ant that no studio <laughs> well I forgot what the reason was but the guy there was for some reason we couldn't get the studio space so if I had committed with Anthony we would have you know gone yeah. with that and I would have been on the east coast yeah but for some reason we couldn't get it and then I came out here yeah so you never know what's gonna happen H- has moving to LA brought you more work and more inspiration than living in New Jersey absolutely yeah absolutely yeah yeah so so as soon as you got here what like what kind of things were you doing Was it like instant you know it was actually crazy dude the i moved i got here on like a wednesday or something yeah and then saturday night was a playboy cardi show he was <laughs> he was opening for keith ape like he wasn't even anything yet He's, oh wow he still only had a couple soundcloud singles yeah and um rodolfo from dapper yep was like yo i'm heading out like come with me so i was like all right let's go and um, just to like backtrack really quick this was like right when hashtags became a thing yeah, so yeah, you could yeah. hashtag like cinematography and I would just like creep on everybody <laughs> and I had like a half a dozen dudes in LA that I was just creeping on who were just like steady working like Darren Miller yeah. James Dafina all those dudes so we go to the Playboy Cardi show and Darren and James are standing in the back with their movies 
because they're filming for Keith Abe. Yeah. So I was just like, yo, I like, I'm obsessed with you guys. I ju literally just moved here a few That's days cool. ago. I'll work for free. I don't care. I'll pick up trash. Like, I don't care. Dude, I'm sure that was your like first realization that like, I damn, I made like was, the right choice. It was crazy. Dude. Yeah. It was such a crazy coincidence. So I gave them both my numbers. Um, Darren didn't hit me up, but James was like, yo, man, if you want to come over and just like pick my brain a little bit, whatever. So I went to his house. We hung out for a few hours and he was just like, yo, if you want to come on set and just help me out. And he was doing big stuff already, you know, working a lot for Live Nation and doing music videos for like um, FK, for FK1 first. He's one of Post Malone's homies. Oh, okay. So he just brought me on a bunch of stuff. And from there, I'll just recheck who that is. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Go for it. <laughs> Hello? So now that you're in LA, what are some must-see places? Are there any spots that you regular at? Oh, man. Um, damn. Like, if you're in a close, definitely round two. Oh, yeah. Um, definitely Wasteland. It's another thrift store, but it's not strictly, like, Supreme, ASAP, Guest, stuff like that. Um, what about food spots? Oh, Cactus Takiera, if you want some nice tacos <laughs> and burritos. Uh, Daikokuya down in Little Tokyo if you like ramen. Oh, yeah. Love and ramen. You got to go to Juku Juku, which is my favorite Korean barbecue spot. Oh, yeah. It's like religion to go there once a week is it one of those korean barbecue spots that's like tiny and always packed no 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 so i think juku juku translates to after school club so it's got like oh, a shit. very like everyone there is like our age you know like younger people and it's all you can eat oh and gotta love all you can eat just, just gotta be that good vibes like really cool decorations it's that's, just that's cool man yeah all right so i had a couple uh, i made like a blast on my instagram and you did too so we to so ask up uh, people that submit in their questions so i got one over here so at uh drummy wants to know what do you enjoy the most about cinematography and what is the least enjoyable aspect of it uh okay so I, the most enjoyable aspect is definitely taking an idea from concept to creation so yeah. like when someone comes to me and they like spitball this idea and we make it happen and just seeing a client happy with the product we give them is always a great feeling oh yeah you know like i think with like any creative is yeah that's like, like the best so much can go wrong in the process and then when you successfully create something like it feels really really yeah. good yeah. so that's definitely my favorite thing and what about your least <laughs> oh man doing different takes <laughs> there's a lot of stress sometimes oh yeah because sometimes you'll run into something on set that you've never dealt with before and you have to figure it out. Yeah. You know, so there's a lot or do of... Do you mean like technical issues or just like people or... Technical, anything? people... Like I did a music video recently where they had two little kids as extras and one of them literally did not stop crying for an hour and the director was just like, we need to do something. So she had to like figure out a way to like hide the kid's mom in this bush where he could see her while wow. he's playing with these like little stuff you like that. You have to like do a lot of improvising. A I'm lot sure. of improvising, yeah. Wow. So that gets stressful sometimes, but that's not really a huge complaint for being the worst. Oh thing. dude, that sounds you know? pretty bad. If, if I had to if I had to you know, had a say in that. <laughs> I guess, yeah. I mean I don't know. <laughs> and then so uh, the, to follow that up, uh he also wants to know who are your role models in the industry? And uh and then I follow up to that as well as a, how do you approach a new session? So I guess we'll start with who, who are your role models in the industry? Um, definitely Mike Marasco. He's a DP director out here. And okay. he's just like, he's all about like getting it done and doing it right. But he's also super selfless and like, is all about making sure everybody else grows yeah. with him. You know? Yeah. That's important in creative. I really appreciate it, that. With creative yeah. stuff. It's so important. Cause if you just keep doing like the same thing and you're not like growing then yeah you're yeah not advancing but also like if you're just focused on growing yourself and not everyone around you as well then yeah you like, got to grow the team and you your, your circle yeah, yeah. yeah yeah absolutely yeah and then uh so how do you approach a new session when you're doing like a video on your own it, it really all depends like a lot of times people will come to me with a concept already written a treatment like a, a really clear idea of what they want so yeah. from there it's kind of just like being another person for them to bounce off of and then take my knowledge and kind of just fill in the blanks. Yeah. But other times people will come to me with like, literally like, I want a video of my car. Yeah. And then you got to be like, all right, where do you want to shoot it? What do you want the vibe to be? <laughs> yeah. What's your budget? How much time do we have? And a lot you of know? times I'm sure people like don't know. They're like, oh, whatever you want. And yeah. Like, and oh. it's like, all right. But like I, what I want could be nothing like what right, you want. Yeah. You know? So you still need like an idea. Yeah. 
Okay. I, I hope that answers the yeah, question. Yeah, absolutely, man. All right, and so uh, a Py- Py- at Pyrex Media wants to know, what suction cups and rods are you using for your car mounted jobs? Yo, shout out Pyrex. He <laughs> helped me at H2O and he oh, killed yeah. it. Yeah, That's he's out awesome. in Vegas. That's cool, man. Um, so Film Tools, I believe they're a local store here in LA, but they make really, really good uh, suction cups. Like their own? or Yeah, yeah I believe they're in-house, yeah. Okay. But they make the suction cup along with the grip heads and the rods, so all those pieces come together to hold the camera. So definitely check out Film Tools. I think it's a little expensive compared to like... I'm sure it's quality though. eBay and Amazon stuff, but yeah, it's quality. <laughs> yeah, it'll keep so. your stuff safe. <laughs> and yo, Pyrex, if you're ever in LA, we can go together because I got to buy some stuff. So oh, yeah. we'll take a look at it. Hell yeah. All right, man. So let's fast forward to your career now. So seven months ago, you released your first cinematography reel in four years. What type of footage did you have on it? And how do you feel your work has evolved since your, your reel before that? Oh man, it, it was crazy. Yeah, like <laughs> four years, that's crazy, dude. Um, I mean, since the last reel, I got some real opportunities. Yeah. Like, um, there's a director out here, Good Boy Shady, who hired me on a lot of gigs that were, you know, like I told him up front, like, this is some stuff bigger than anything I've ever done. And he was like, no worries, bro. Like, we're doing it together. Like, we'll figure it out. And That's I, awesome when you, when you can have that, like, assurance from someone who's, like, been there, done that, and you're just like, all right, cool. It's incredible. Yeah. yeah. It really takes a lot of weight off your chest. Yeah. And it helps you grow. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like, the guys here at Porch House Pictures have just kind of brought me on almost everything they've done, and we've just all grown together. And every time you do a shoot, you learn something new, or you try something new, and you figure out that's a better way to do it. Mm-hmm. And then you take that to the next one, and you just, yeah. I don't know, it's been a lot of growing over four years. But that's, that's awesome. Yeah, so yeah. I got a go. chance to see it, and I really liked the variety of footage that you had in it. So, for those who haven't seen it, can you just kind of give us just a little gist of like what kind of footage they can expect from it? Like, I know from you, you the all, real? yeah, from the real, yeah. Oh, so like, um, I guess a lot of automotive, a lot of music videos, and then a few pieces of just, um, I'd say stuff I really liked from yeah. from traveling I've done over the last few years, like going to Norway and yeah. stuff like that. That's cool, dude. Yeah, I really liked that one shot you had of those like girls that were like dancing on the on the in that when that one scene that was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. it, uh, by the train tracks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, that was um, Mike Marasco's uh, wife, Cassandra. She was directing that. It was for um, a clothing company. Dude, that totally was so forgot. rad. I like the vibes on that. <laughs> oh yeah, that's all her. Oh cool. Yeah, no, that's super cool. So you're really big into music and, and, and produ- producing and, and assisting on music videos. Kevin Hershock wants to know, how did you get your start working on set and what advice would you tell someone who wants to start slash grow in that space? So my first music video was in college um, with this local Philly rapper named Damani. And we were all kind of at the same level. Like he didn't have a label, he didn't have anything. so we reached out to him and he was like yeah let's do it and we both didn't expect like a million dollar budget you know (laughs) final product so we kind of just tried it you know like definitely watch a ton of reference videos like you can learn so much from just watching different music videos like the angles and transitions the angles and the vibe and like for example like maybe a reggaeton music video has a ton of really fast moving shots while an r&b video is like like very calm and slow so like if you kind of start to notice trends and like similarities and videos and you can kind of start to think to yourself like this is the kind of vibe i want these are the kind of camera moves i want stuff like that that's cool dude um so a lot of people probably don't know what it how you know usually goes down with music videos and stuff and I, i i'm this might be a dumb question, but um, I'm, I'm assuming you probably will play the track while like the while the rappers are like, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, the, we'll have a speaker yeah, on set yeah, for them to yeah. make sure everything times up correctly. Yeah. And and how, and how many takes does the, do different scenes normally take, or do you do like the whole song in one scene? And how do you, Usually, how does that yeah. work? Yeah. Unless you're saying unless like the uh, idea is like all right, this scene is only for this for that verse, one part. Yeah. Then we'll only have them do that verse. Gotcha. But if it's like a performance scene that in the story of the video is throughout, we'll just yeah. have them perform the okay. whole song. Yeah, that makes sense. Because if you guys did the whole song in every scene, that would take like so long. I mean, we, yeah, yeah, sometimes sure, we do yeah. that. <laughs> sometimes we'll listen to a song like 25, 30 times in one day and we're just like, all Sick right. Song. <laughs> yeah. Same thing with editing car videos. Sometimes you like yeah. choose one of your favorite songs and you just can't listen to it again yeah. after that. Yeah, because I've seen like uh, Anthony Halcyon like, rec- uh, editing on like Instagram Live and he's just like always, like, it's just Sometimes you listen to the same like beat for like the same couple seconds <laughs> Yeah, like just to get just the to shot get it right, right. Yeah. yeah. So speaking of music, music videos, tell us about your music video for ASAP Ant. Like, how how was it working with him and ASAP Rocky? And uh, yeah, how was that? So that was still to this day probably one of the 
best moments of my life. Yeah. So that was all thanks to um, Frank Have Mercy and Amber Parks. Shout mm -hmm. out to both of them. Um, I met Frank. He just moved to LA. He's a photographer. I don't know how we met Amber, but Amber is honestly, if you guys are into anything creative, you need to check out Amber Parks because she's literally killing it. She did the set design for the oh, Post wow. Malone Rockstar video. Oh, cool. With like the, comp uh, was that the With the samurai. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I God, believe she did set design. I'm sorry if I'm wrong, but I know <laughs> she did something, you know, really essential to the making of that video. And she needed someone to shoot the ASAP Ant video. And she hit up Frank and me and Frank had just met and he knew I shot video. So he was like, yo, tonight, ASAP Ant, you want to do it? And I was driving home from set. I was super tired. I was like, absolutely. And yeah, you can't pass up on an never. opportunity like that. That's another that. thing, too. Like, always say yes. That's, like, one of the best advice I ever got. Oh, yeah. Like, you never know. That's great advice, man. Because so, then that person may never ask you again. Yeah. Yeah. But um, they told me it was ASAP Ant. I thought it was only going to be ASAP Ant. Suburban pulls up. Ant, Rocky, Nast, Lou. Wow. Everyone gets out. And Rocky's like, what's up? What are we doing? Damn. And I was like, this is what we're doing. That's and we just, cool. How was it working with them? Were they, like, super easygoing? Or? So, like, like they all kind of keep to themselves except for Rocky. Rocky's really, like... Yeah, he's, like, the leader. He yeah. tries to get his hands in everything in a really good way. And yeah. he's honestly, like... Yeah, he's just got, like, from what I know, he just has that whole, like, creative director sort of, like... As, as a person, like, he's definitely, like, my role model. He's, like, the best overall person I've ever met. And he was super nice to me. And he was, like... If he didn't like something, he'd be like, yo, man, I don't like that. Like, try it like this. He'd watch the shot and he'd be like, yo, I love that. Let's do a couple takes like that. That's sick. And he just kind of like really wants the best product for everybody. Yeah. I feel like as a creative, that that's always a good thing. And well, Because like, I'd rather somebody tell me like, do this, this way, let's try this or I like this rather than like, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. Yeah, I'd rather have someone do that than say like, not like whatever you want to do. Yeah, and then yeah. a week later when they're they like, get the nah. edit, they're like, yo, I don't like that. Yeah, like, why didn't yeah. you say something a week ago? Exactly, you know? yeah. So I'm sure that was like good creative direction. Yeah, and like part. a big issue with like the, the SoundCloud generation is a lot of these kids just don't really care. And like- They're like, I'm down for whatever. <laughs> where it's like, yo, yeah, I don't care, just come bring a camera to my house and we'll just like it's like nah yo, like, let's take a minute let's to be think. creative about let's it let's think of like come up with an idea and then let's take some time to shoot it and that's like all Rocky's all about just like yeah taking his time and like looking at everything and like laying it out and being like alright this this that that yeah. you know and I really appreciated that yeah, that's awesome dude and you worked with Rocky recently with with, with also with Juicy J and, and Drum right? so yeah I was just a gimbal operator on that okay. um, my buddy Stefan um, he DP'd it for this director named Nadia who kills it she did that drum video she's got a Tyler the Creator video coming out if I can't mention that if you can take that out <laughs> I think I can mention it I didn't give out any details <laughs> but um, yeah so I mean that was with Rocky, but I wasn't like face yeah. to face, you know, doing anything with him. That's cool, man. I mean, it's still a good experience for Absolutely. sure, no matter what it is. That was the most fun video I worked on last year. <laughs> That's awesome. It was amazing. Yeah. So I got to ask, man, who's an artist you've been dying to work with? Playboy Cardi, yeah. bro. Playboy Cardi. <laughs> I've been obsessed with him since, I don't want to sound like a hipster, like I liked him before or whatever, but I've been <laughs> obsessed with him since like before Broke Boy, man. Oh, wow. Yeah, because I was a huge Awful Records fan, and he grew up like in that Awful House with Ethereal and Father and all those guys. Have you crossed paths with him before on like a set or just through like a friends or I mean, anything? At, at Rolling Loud, yeah. um, he performed, and then I was actually hired by my boy JMP to shoot um, Lil Uzi's verse in the Woke Up Like This video. Yeah. But Uzi never showed up. Oh. We waited like seven hours, and he never showed up. But Dude, I, I always wonder why that happens sometimes. Like, I hear about rappers not showing a, up. Sometimes they just don't care. Yeah. You know? I think he was, like, eating ice cream with Lil Yachty or something. And he was <laughs> like, nah. But his manager at one point was like, yo, he's 20 minutes out. Get ready. And yeah. everyone was, like, fumbling. We had all the cameras ready. And then, like, four hours later, he didn't show up. That's crazy. So. Yeah, I remember when, like, uh, Chief Keef was supposed to do a video with, like, Wiz and, and Rick, Rick Ross, I think, I believe it was. I might be wrong. But he, like, didn't even show up. And it's like, who does that? I feel like Chief's an exception, though. <laughs> He, he could let he, he yeah, can do whatever he wants. Man. <laughs> I'll, I wouldn't be even be mad if I waited twelve hours for Chief Keith. <laughs> All right. So okay. So you got to be a part of ma the the making of a Rick Ross music music video, and you were helping Darren Miller and Ryan Snyder. For those that aren't familiar with them, tell us a little about them and how you met both of them, and about that specific shoot. So I met Darren at that Playboy Cardi yeah, show yeah. right when I moved to LA. Okay. And then James Defina, the other guy, he did. Um, Post Malone's Go Flex and congratulations mm -hmm. and all that. He hit me up to help him out. We became good friends. And Darren saw me working with him. And then he hit me up to help him with something. And then 
um, this is funny because in school, someone told me one day, like someone in the role you want to do is not going to show up and you're going to have to step up to the plate. And I was like, you're like, school warned me about this. No, I was like, that never happens, bro. Like, who's not going to show up to their... <laughs> and one day, somebody, for some whatever reason it was, didn't show up. And they were like, and go Dar on in there. Darren was like, do you know how to AC? And I was like, yeah, bro. That's like all I did in school. Like on that modern baseball video and everything. Yeah. And I became his AC for a few months. So I was AC in on Rick Ross. I was AC in Juicy J. All this stuff. It was Khalifa. That's sick, dude. So that's how me and Darren kind of started working together. And then Ryan is rick ross's like go-to video director i don't really know much um about what else ryan does because darren was like my go-to guy like because i'm trying to be the dp so i just like watch a lot yeah. of dps so him and darren have their relationship but he hired darren to do the rick ross ty dollar sign video so i was ac in for that and it was uh like just another day on that's, a, on that's a music awesome video. Yeah. dude was it hard coordinating with like all those models on the set uh, that's not my. That was. Well, my I mean, job. I'm just saying, just yeah. just uh, like for whoever was doing that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the models I think were all from an agency, and the woman in charge of the agency was there, and she was like a. She real, knew them all and stuff. She yeah. was a real like snappy like yeah. ladies like you got to do this right now, and then they would all just kind of walk over. So she was really on top of <laughs> that's her awesome. stuff. Yeah. I can't imagine not having somebody like that on the set. That'd be tough. Well, that's the thing. Like when some people like want a video and they say like, oh, I want a bunch of girls and I want this and that, and you throw them a number and they're like, why is it so expensive? And it's like we literally got to not only pay all the models but we got to pay somebody to yeah. be in charge of all the models yeah. like there's a lot of roles on set <laughs> yeah it's like i'm not trying to just pocket a ton of money it's like it's being distributed a bunch of a lot of people yeah so cool that's an example of that <laughs> so dude tell me uh i i know you have a good a good story about this but tell, tell me about odd future like how you linked up with them oh i love odd future man <laughs> i was actually watching um i forgot what video it was but it's all of them on like a 10 minute song yeah and they're Filmed it at a Terry Richardson photo shoot. Oh, okay. I forgot what the name of the video. Was. I feel like I've seen that. Yeah. It had to. Yeah. It's it's, <laughs> it's legendary. But so, my boy, so cool. my boy Etienne Maurice, shout out, um, that I went to school with, grew up with a couple of the guys from Odd Future here in LA. Oh, okay. So when we came out here for our summer in LA program, that wasn't the internship. He was like, "Yo, um, Haji, like longtime friend of mine, Haji Beats. He was yeah. like, he wants a video, and then he was like, um, Mike G wants a video first. Mike G and Left Brain." And Etienne and my friend uh, Rob Haffey directed it, and then I DP'd it. And that was the first big artist music video I did, and I still think it's one of the best ones we've oh, ever wow. done. Because like, when we were in school, we were taking all these classes where we were learning how to do stuff, and we applied it directly to that video. Yeah. And like now, it's not that I've like forgotten a lot of it, but I've like, I'm not the one sitting with the director yeah, yeah. coming up with the concept and all that. So. We put together this idea where like he gets carjacked or like he's he's with some other guy's girl and that guy carjacks him and all this stuff yeah and haji and some other dudes from odd future loved it so then haji had us do his karate man video which wow. was the first video i worked on that broke a million wow and same thing like all three of us just brainstormed and like haji would come over our house and just kind of like smoke mad blunts <laughs> in our house while we're editing the video with him and that's it cool was, are you still in, really in like contact with them or so Haji like lost his number or something and I was doing a studio shoot for somebody a year ago and I see him walking down the street and I'm like Haji what's up bro and he remembered me and I was like give me your number so like I haven't texted him in a minute yeah. but I still keep in touch with Etienne that's cool and yeah it's important to like stay in touch with people like that absolutely absolutely yeah. especially when they're in the same city yeah you know, absolutely like, yeah so. so let's talk about your, your music taste what's your favorite genre of music and who are your favorite artists currently slash like who do you listen to the oh most? man it it changes like yeah. weekly yeah i've been listening to a lot of like lo-fi house music recently, oh okay cool which is super random but it's really nice to like sit in traffic too because you do a ton or of should that. just do like creative work too yeah or just to, yeah just have like in the background but in terms of hip-hop like i'm a huge hip-hop fan. oh yeah yeah so I'd say right now, I've been listening to a lot of really like underproduced ignorant stuff, like <laughs> like Black Cray and um, like that Goth Money Records. Oh, guys. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, man, that's a really good question. I love Saw Baby. Yeah. Saw Baby is like a, I'm a huge fan of him right now. That's cool, man. Yeah, he's just like really unique right now that's cool and asap i'll always oh, love yeah. asap dude they're like yeah i can't wait for his new record that's gonna me be too, awesome man. the cozy tapes too is amazing oh i know right they got did mad. you like ferg's new record that was i liked it a lot uh plain jane the name of the record i believe so yeah 
Um, not as much as I like Trap Lord. Mm -hmm. That's like Trap Lord is like the best. I have the vinyl hanging in my room. Oh, it's yeah. like such a yeah, I have that vinyl as well. <laughs> to like my life, but yeah. yeah, we're seeing him in like February, and I'm like so excited. I don't know if I can drop this yet, but I'm gonna say it anyway because yeah. this will probably come out. But I'm flying to Japan the last week of this month. Oh wow! To shoot an ASAP Ferg Joey Badass video. Nice. And Joey's verses in Japan and Ferg's verses in New York. Oh cool! Are you do you're doing which verse verses? You're doing. We're, I'm doing both. So oh, we're both. flying to gotcha. Japan to okay. do Joey's, and then February we're flying to New York to oh, do okay. ASAP Ferg. Is Ferg gonna be in in on set while you're doing Joey's? Not in Japan. Set? No, not in no, Japan. He's okay. not coming to Japan. Okay. But it's um. It's been, but is Joey gonna be in? He wants to be. Yeah. But for the story, um, it wouldn't make sense. But whatever he wants, we do. Okay. It. So is this track out yet? It's not. Right? Track's not out yet. Oh, wow. Can't give details. That's even bigger. But the video is like drift spec, drift themed. No. So we're getting way. like a D1 GP car in Japan. Wow. And we're trying to finesse like who's a lot the, of. Who's who's the on set with you for that? So it's just me, uh, the director JMP, and the producer Ahmed. That's awesome, dude. I'm, I've been dying to go to Japan, bro, and the fact that dude, this I is, still haven't gone. And I'm this is like why we're going to do a Joey Badass <laughs> ASAP Ferg video. Like, that's amazing. It's, 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 You'll have to take like yet. cool photos too, as well. I also don't know if I'm allowed to mention that yet. Yeah. So no, I'm pretty sure I'll have this shoot, out. After shoot me a text yeah. before okay. you release yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, for but sure. When you're editing it, it will, <laughs> okay. I'll let you cool, know. Cool, cool. All right, so you just did Rolling Loud Festival with a few friends of yours. Tell us about that. Incredible. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna butcher his last name, but Nasir Bouliach or Boulier. All thanks to him. Um, Sebastian Rodriguez, shout out. He hit me up and was like, yo, you want to go to Rolling Loud? And I was like, yeah. He was like, I'm putting together a proposal. Sebastian is the whole reason I went because he put the whole proposal together. And he was like, I'll do photo, Michael do video. And Nasir was like, yo, I love your guys' work. Come to Rolling Loud. Nice. So we flew to Miami. You guys had just like full access and everything, yeah? Uh, for the most part, like security is really weird at those events. Yeah, I, I remember I was watching a, a vlog on that and people were yeah. saying that the security was like just well, kind of like, uptight. Whoever's head of security would tell them in the beginning of the day, like these are the rules for media. And then in the middle of the day, an artist might be like, I don't want anyone on stage for my set. And then some security guards will think that's for the whole day. And some of them will be like only for this set. Wow. And then like no one's on the same page by like the third or fourth artist. So there's probably like some security guards that are just like, no. Yeah. Like, that's kind of annoying. And then there's like some people who have media, but it's like they're only with one specific artist. And then they try to finesse the whole day. Yeah. And then they're like, there's too many media people on stage. And it's like, how is that possible? Because yeah. we're the official media and we've done like a head count. Yeah. So, so it gets complicated. Yeah. So for something like that, where you're, where you're, I'm just going to use this as an example. So when you're going to like Royal Lab Festival, are you're working for the actual festival and you're producing them the official video, or is it like for specific artists, or how does it, how so did it work in that situation? For that one, it's for the official after movie for Rolling Loud. Okay. So we're working for Rolling Loud. Gotcha. But um, Sebastian was doing photography where he had to. Um, I could be wrong, but he had to like edit and then deliver at the end of each day so that they can keep their Instagram oh, like, yes. up to date okay, with gotcha. like, what's going on day I feel to day. like that's a lot more pressure. Yeah, but he's like so yeah, good. Yeah, he's just, so on you know, it. Yeah. Like, he's so on top of it. Yeah, he's killing it too, man. Yo, Seb is killing it. Bro. I know. Seb is killing Dude, it. Dude, I hit him up the other day and I was like, we got to do a podcast together. You need to, man. Yeah. You need to. Yeah, he's, he's killing it. I, I've been meaning to like buy one of his prints too. I'm just like, I can't decide. You bought two of them. You bought two of them. <laughs> <laughs> he's also the most humbly guy in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Like, he's the nicest guy in the yeah, world. Yeah, he's like killing it. So shout out to him. Man. Shout out to him. And also <laughs> shout out for bringing me to Xavier and Bones tomorrow night. Oh, I'm yeah. super hyped. <laughs> so, okay, so I, I got I to mention this so the juicy j video that you that you did with the bag lambo was wild uh how stoked were you to work on that and then what are your thoughts on hip-hop becoming more and more relevant in the car scene because it went pretty viral amongst the car scene i feel like so i didn't work on it yeah. i just connected um max uh directed by max the director okay. with okay. um with the josh car and, at oh, bowden yeah. mm -hmm. and i was just like josh yo it'd be really cool if you could like bring your car to this set and he was like yeah i'm free that day i'll do it so and Max was like, I love the car. That's cool, man. So, so you were definitely a part of it then in some sense. Well, I didn't, some I didn't way, work right? on it. Yeah, like, yeah. But you were like part of it making, yeah, yeah. Like, making it happen. Like Russ Frazier, Russ Frazier was the DP. Shout out Russ. He killed it. <laughs> um, yeah, he shot it. But then I just connected, you know, the director and the owner of the car. But I mean, Rotaform reposted it. Yeah. And I never posted this. And Josh has been nagging, not nagging me, but he's been asking me to post it. But um, Jimmy from Ray Shremmerd when we aired the car out, he was like, holy shit, like, how does it do that, whatever, and he wrote, he did like a quick freestyle about like, yeah. the bagged Lambo. That's awesome. And I just like, for a while now, I've been wanting to 
Because, like, all these rappers are getting stock Ferraris and stock yeah. Maseratis, and it's, like... It, there's no, like, personality to them. Nah, and it's, like, dude, like, if you got, like... Like, Neek from Antisocial, he's a big car guy, and he's got, like, a new Benzo on Air and Rotiforms yeah. and, like, a bagged Bentley Bentaga, and, like, he knows yeah. about, he's like, style and stuff. He's not going to keep those stock at all. There's no, no way. No way. But it's, like, these rappers should do the same thing. Like, you should... I saw Gucci just bought a McLaren, like, yo, put some wheels hook on that. that. Up, like, yeah, right? hook yeah. it up. Do something. Like... <laughs> But don't put like no no disrespect to Forgy Auto, but like don't just put Forgies on it. Like get like some HREs or yeah. Rotiforms or something, and like we can bag it or something. Yeah, like yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> I feel like that has such huge potential to become a thing. Yeah. In the rap world, and like I can't speak for the the stance community just because everyone is into different things. Yeah. But I know a lot of kids who are into that hip hop culture, which is now bleeding into everything, oh, like yeah. clothing music it's all just connected everything's together, just yeah. connecting to like one big thing dude in that one video that the weekend had where, where with that with that one car and i i'm blanking the rx7 yeah, yeah the that Gen was in, that was in the uh, in the desert or whatever that yeah. was like super cool so cool yeah it's awesome it's it, instead of just them using just like a regular car with like no personality to right it. i mean not that there's anything wrong with that but i feel like having a modded car just gives it more like yeah character yeah, yeah i just think having like a stock ferrari is no longer like <laughs> Yeah, like sure, cool? it's like big baller stuff. We know it costs a lot of money, but it's like it's not stylish. Yeah, exactly. Like you're spending all this money on like really stylish clothes. Like might as well do it. With might as well cars, do it with yeah. your car. Yeah, yeah, you know. So, so let's switch gears a little bit and talk more about cars. How did you first get into them and shooting and shooting them? I'm sure there's a, a pretty good story behind that. So, um, growing up, my mom worked at a car dealership. Mm -hmm. So on like days where I didn't go to school, I would just go with her to the dealership. It was a Chevy dealer, so we didn't have, like... <laughs> Anything super cool. I'm not a big American car guy, but we had some like Corvettes us. and shit. And, like, I played Need for Speed, like, crazy and Midnight Club and all that. And I went to... Uh, I grew up with my friend EJ, who's a collective. He does um, illustrations of different cars and designs, liveries and whatnot. So growing up, me and him would just, like, always talk about cars. I'm like, I want this for my first car. I want this, whatever. So I've always been into cars. But then um, something happened at school where I had to stay home for a few months. And while I was home, a friend of mine, Frank Miniveri, hooked me up with Justin Francisco from mm -hmm. Flipsco yeah, yeah, yeah. and was like, yo, you should like shoot some videos for this dude, Flipsco. And I was like, I've never shot a video of a car because at that time I've only done like short films yeah. and BMX. So I was like, I'll try it. And I was like, and really? that opened up a whole new world for you. Yeah. Honestly, that like changed everything. And I was so bad at it at first, but <laughs> I didn't I didn't know I was bad because I was hyped on my own shit. Which is totally fine, because like if you're hyped, you're gonna keep doing it. Yeah. Like, if you lose that hype, then you're not gonna be yeah. enthusiastic, and like you need that enthusiasm to, to keep growing. Yeah. So, I just kept shooting cars, kept getting and like car shows and stuff. Car That's, shows, yeah. went to Honda Day, uh, first class, like yeah. everything. That's crazy how that just that little connection. Well, not little, but just that one connection just like opened up. Never know. And now it's like your world. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Not necessarily, but it's like it's like one of your big, like one of the yeah, big, yeah, big yeah. main yeah. things you shoot. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I will always like love oh, that yeah. community. Yeah. Not a big fan of the bolt-on trend that's going on, the <laughs> wide body everything. Oh, but yeah, yeah. you teach yeah, their own. Yeah, it's not really for me either. To teach their own, yeah. yeah. It's changing a little bit. So tell us about your Lexus, man. How long have you had it? Where slash how did you find it? And like, you know, what have you done to it? Um, dude, I've been obsessed with VIP for a while. Yeah. So I've wanted it for like two or three years now. And then when I finally sold my Miata, I um, on Craigslist you can set it up so whenever someone start, like types in a specific keyword, mine was LS four hundred. You get an email that someone posted it. Oh so wow! Every That's morning, how people get get on things. Yeah. So every morning I would get a bunch of emails like LS four hundred, LS four hundred. So I would, like waited, and then this dude posted a really clean one, and he was this like old. <laughs> Bolivian guy who like had an oxygen tank hooked up to him and he told me he was like a DEA agent in Bolivia in the 70s like hopping out of helicopters and wow. shit like crazy shit that's fucking cool. and he was just like I need the money for the car like I don't need the car I need the money more for like medical bills or something yeah. so dude that's always the perfect opportunity when somebody is just like old didn't beat on the car it's like probably super mint it was mint dude yeah. it was mint so I bought it um did a lot of shooting at that time for Road to Form and AccuAir. So we kind of worked out a deal where I did a lot of shoots in yeah. exchange for products. So I got the air ride, got the, the wheels. wheels. Nice. Um, same thing with Bowden. They did the install. 
Also, shout out to Bowdoin because I had to, because of complications, leave my car there for like six months. And that thing did not lose air for six months. Wow. It just sat there. Like battery died, everything. It didn't lose air. That's that's so like unheard of. They did an unbelievable job. That's awesome. Like, they're so good at what shout they do. It's crazy. Them, man. Shout that's out to Bowdoin. Awesome, seriously. Man. So, so then, what yeah. are your what are your future plans for for the car? Um, I really like simplicity. Like I don't want to do any over fenders or anything like that. <laughs> no bolt on. So kits. like no no bolt on <laughs> kits like. No crazy colors, just um, gonna like LED everything. Um, maybe get a few like JDM stuff on the inside, like some Junction Produce, like headmats and stuff like that. Nice, but, like, just keep it simple. Just and keep clean, it simple. Yeah. yeah, I'm not trying to snap necks or anything. It's <laughs> keeping it clean. And then when I when I flew it to New Jersey, my buddy Charlie, who um, did the control arms and all that stuff, he said he looked under the car and like literally the stickers with the serial numbers wow. were all still there so Dude, he was that like is mint. yeah so he was like do not like don't. i know it's it's gonna feel cool to drive around aired out but like don't do yeah. it like just did you did you have to do any like fender work or anything or no so i told them i wanted to try to fit everything without doing anything so we just rolled the inside okay yeah, we didn't yeah. pull or anything that's cool that's the best way to do it that's that's how i did it too man just, oh yeah you have to man i don't know just everyone's got their own taste yeah and i taste like sim- their own <laughs> i like simplicity <laughs> yeah so yeah so you mentioned this a little bit, but you've had the privilege of working with some very well-known automotive companies in your career, most notably Rotoform as of late. How did you get connected with them and, and tell us about the work you've been doing for them? I don't even remember how I got connected yeah. with Rotoform. <laughs> yeah. Um, damn. Is that like helicopter an issue? That's nah, not good. I really don't remember where it all started. Yeah. But, um, but you've been doing some... Like, crazy stuff for them really yeah so recently well since i moved to la they're based out in compton yeah. so they're only like a 40 minute drive from me yeah and um jj from dub corpse yeah um is their in-house video guy and me and jj are really good friends so when he needed more people to help him he asked me if i could be his second shooter for a bunch of stuff and i said absolutely dude i like love rotiform so they took me to wertherse in austria they had me do like a ton of awesome shoots around here. They like sponsored my H2O film this year. And they're just like super, like Brian Henderson is like one of the nicest people I've ever met. Yeah, he's man. super humble. He's like super cool. He's just a kid in like a grown up's body, <laughs> you know? He like goes snowboarding all the time. Like, just, all he's cool had shit. so many cool cars. Too. So many cool cars, really good taste. And like, I just really love everybody at that yeah, company. They're killing it, man. They are. It's- killing it but like they got like ao doing mm-hmm. photography for them and ao is someone who's like really in touch with culture like for lack of a better word like he knows what's going on in in this and that and he knows what's trending and like he's just really he's a good person to be for lack of a better word like a brand ambassador like yeah, somebody kind yeah. of like representing rota for him yeah so they he's have a like really the good perfect team there. person for that role. Yeah, I feel like. Yeah. So they're really they're really good with what they're doing. Yeah, that's that's cool, man. And then um, so and then Acura is another company, countless car features, and being part of their SEMA team in 2016, which was cool. Tell us about that. That's all thanks to Anthony Purcell. So I remember exactly where I was. I was driving through like Utah on my cross country road trip to yeah. LA, and Anthony calls me, and he's like, "Yo, I'm doing SEMA with Acura. They need more shooters. Do you want to do it?" I was like, what do you mean? Like, I've never been to SEMA, absolutely. So huge thank you to Anthony and AccuAir for my first SEMA experience. And then when we were there, we just bonded with the whole AccuAir team. And when I moved to LA, there's so many people out here on it. So it's same thing with Rotoform. They'd be like, yo, this guy's got our product. Meet up with them, do a video, goes on their channel. Did dozens of those. That's cool. Yeah, I, I, I like, was checking out a lot of them and I just like, you know, it's pretty cool stuff. Appreciate it. Yeah, of course, man. So your first ex- exposure to the LA car scene dealt with you collaborating with John Zhang. Tell us about that. Dude, great. That's like a prime example of you never know what can happen. That's why you always need to go out there. Like, yeah. That was when I moved here for, I don't even remember what year that was. Dude, I, moved I, don't, out here. I don't either, but I do definitely remember remember that. If it was 13, I was here for my internship. Okay. And um, my buddy, Alex Goldstein, shout out Goldstein, (laughs) from the East Coast was like, yo, what are you doing this weekend? LTMW is hosting a car meet. You need to go. And I was like, oh, no, man. Like, I literally just moved in. I haven't even built my bed. (laughs) And he was like, nah, you got to go. So I went. I did a video. I got one shot of John Zhang taking a photo of somebody. Yeah. And then he hits me up and he's like, yo, um, this was a sick video. Like, you got a shot of me started talking and then he was like do you want to come do a bts of this photo shoot i'm doing yeah 
which was Cremins's old like three series oh, yeah. in the Sixth Street like mm-hmm. bridge with the lights. And that video was still one of my favorite videos I've ever done. Yeah. But that then exploded into shooting cars out here. I met like Johnny Sue, E60 Daddy. It was like Daddy. a domino effect. That's how it works though. Like you do <laughs> one video and the right people see it and then they want videos and then suddenly you've like done this. It's yeah. like you just got to go out and shoot. Like if you're out there, it'll happen, you know? Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. That's awesome, dude. John Zhang, man. Dude. It's an OG. Legend. 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 <laughs> 10 13. <laughs> yeah. Dude, his before and after like photoshops are so I love crazy. them. He's been doing so many funny ones for yeah. like the after is the before and it's just like <laughs> so cool. So your most recent up upload to your YouTube channel was 2 weeks ago or so your 2017 H2OI film. Tell us about that, the planning and what uh someone can expect from it. So uh there wasn't that much planning that went into it. It was just kind of like freestyle. Other than like making sure I had a minivan to go down there with. <laughs> yeah. Because I had a white van one year with like flip out doors and that was a total nightmare. So I made sure like minivan forever. Um, well, until, I don't know if I'll mention it later, but we're building something that's yeah. not a minivan. Top secret. But, well, it, anyway. Um, <laughs> so that was my like fourth year at h2o so i knew like the vibe and like i have some east coast is like still home in terms of like car community yeah like i still think east coast has the strongest car like the tri-state area i agree the strongest so like all my homies are there and i kind of just drove around looked for i could only do features on rotiform cars because they sponsored this year yeah absolutely so drove around looked for rotiforms was in touch with ao he'd be like yo i got this guy and he sent me a picture i'm like love that car like panda sti and a couple other guys. Yeah, and, he was um, out there for sure, yeah. And just walked around, shot, you know, the usual. What was your favorite uh, car slash scene in your film? Oh, definitely EC10, the yeah. black uh, <laughs> yeah. 997 at yeah. the end, yeah. That Save was, the best for last. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's why I put it at the end, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome, man. All right, so another uh, a submission question. So retro underscore QC is, how do you choose what song goes into, into it goes with uh, what scene or feature in your after movies? So for H2O this year, the like two or three months before it, I started building a playlist on Spotify where I had like songs I knew I wanted to use. Yeah. And it maybe had like 15 songs. And then by the time I got to the edit, I think I only used like one or two of them. Yeah. Just cause like I'd plan for a song, but then when you're in the moment and you're not thinking about it, you're thinking more about the shots you're getting and whatnot. Yeah. When you get to the edit, it like, might not work at all yeah. so i literally spend countless hours just hitting the next button on like soundcloud and, and Spotify, seeing it the, yeah and just the seeing vibe it, what the vibe maps, is yeah. and then like if it's almost there then i'll search like related artists to that specific song and i'll just like like even when i'm not thinking of videos maybe i'm driving down and like a song comes on shuffle and i'm like yo like i suddenly see something i'll like put it in a folder yeah so like i have like an archive of songs that i still want to use so for so as far as the after movie is concerned are you able to use like any song you want because you're not like you're not doing what what is it called monetizing yeah you're not monetizing or you are in your no no no. so i don't make any money off the youtube uploads oh wow because i don't i'd rather use a song that i'm a big fan of than have to try to find a song that I can use for free. I, 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 I can vibe with you on that one, yeah. Because, like, I, it's not about the money. Like, if I hear a song and I shoot a car and then I'm it like, works. I need to do this, then yeah. it's like, I don't care if I'm going to make whatever off the YouTube yeah. monetization. Like, I want to make that video. That's awesome, dude. So Yeah, and you just grind and do your money on your, on your other stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's awesome, dude. That's I respect that a lot. Appreciate it. So um, another 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 fan question. So you, you've said that ever since 2014, H2OI has been... Uh, your favorite automotive event in the world. Uh, so sup uh, underscore Kool-Aid underscore Chris, which is my brother, wants to know, tell us how you think the event has changed over the years since you've been going, or do you think it's been for better or for worse? I think both. Yeah, I, I, think, I, I can vibe with you on that. I think Instagram and like internet fame yeah. has definitely ruined a lot of what I liked about H2O 2014. Yeah which is a lot of these people. Well, another thing was a lot of these cars, I've never seen them before. So like at 14, know, I'll pull into a parking lot and be like, what is this? Where are you from? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And like, they're not like, for lack of a better word, like molested. They're not like ripped up. And right. like, let's see how big of a wheel I can fit in this. It's like, nah, like just fit a size that looks good. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like in that sense, I think H2O and like that entire community has kind of like fallen a little bit. I, can, I agree. Um, a lot of B 
BS went down where the cops really don't like people. Yeah, so, I'm wondering if they're going to have that show next year. Yeah. Like, I feel like every year it's like, you know, hard to tell, but I feel like going into this, like this year, it's like, dude, I yeah. don't even know. I have no idea. And like, I know someone's going to bring up like the Supra driving up the stairs and being yeah. like, oh, well, nothing was ever as bad as that. Yeah. But it's like, it's not about the one car that did this or the one car that did that. It's just about the overall... Yeah. Just and they're like sick of attitude it. Attitude of the, 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 the town kid. is like sick of it. The town's sick of oh, it. Yeah. yeah. So like, but on the flip side, it's still like the one event that everybody goes to. Yeah, man. Like I think no matter no matter how like bad it keeps getting, like I just love the fact that like everyone's there and all the friends, all exactly. your friends are there, and it's just like the vibes you, can't like, be beat. Figure out where your friends are staying. You show up. Yeah. They got all the cars out getting washed. Yeah. Everybody's and you can there. just do your own thing and you stick away from the from the like the bad yeah. crowd or whatever. Yeah. So just... it's still like amazing in that respect. Yeah, I'll always go to H H two O. I'll always go to yeah, no matter what. I'll be like fifty years old. I'm still gonna go to H two O. So next question is from uh, Nebula underscore Films. In five years, where do you see yourself? Do you see yourself still doing music videos and car stuff or do you kind of want to transition to more of a, like a directing kind of role um me and the dudes here at porch house ask ourselves that almost like every week like yeah. where do we see ourselves and like um i don't know if i see myself directing just because that takes a lot of communicating with people, people. and that's not my like yeah. strong suit even though like i'm very like talkative i'm not Again, yeah, like, that takes like a certain personality. It takes a certain skill and it and a can wear you out sometimes. Yeah, so I don't know about directing, but I don't know. Lately, I've been looking back on a lot of the stuff I've done, and it's not what I want to. How do I put this? Like, I kind of want to do more professional and like well thought mm -hmm. out stuff. Yeah, you know, like because yeah. a lot of the people that I look up to, they're not necessarily working every day, but the things that they do do has like 200% of their effort put into right. it and it's like incredible. So you're talking more like conceptual, more creative, thought out kind of well, stuff, yeah? Yeah, definitely still like the role I'm doing on set, but yeah. way more just like patient and like technical and just like not by the book, but like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what like, you mean, yeah. Ye, like yeah i don't know man that that question bugs me because i like stay up and i think in that like, yeah i know that that i mean i fell into that same situation with my career so i was just doing like graphic design and then i became a senior and then i was like well i mean i can't do that all my life and then now i have like a a, a creative director role and it's like a whole new ball game i mean like, you could be a graphic designer yeah yeah i mean i still do graphic design but i'm like managing a team and it's like a whole new world yeah so it just all depends, but I can definitely yeah. vibe with you with you on that. No, I mean sure. I haven't I haven't done um a lot of narrative work recently, like short films yeah. and stuff like that. I would love to get back into that because, yeah. in the end, it's like, so involved. Too. It's so involved, and like you're telling a story, and like every decision you make is for a reason. Yeah. Like a lot of the stuff I'm doing now is kind of just get the shot, just to get it. Yeah. But all those all those things, it's like all right, we're gonna have the camera here and the actor facing this way, and it's like why. <laughs> It's like because this is the emotion or because this is yeah. the action or something yeah. and like i feel like that does a lot of um growing and like you learn a lot by yeah. having to ask yourself those kinds of questions so yeah. i really want to do a lot more work where i'm forced to like ask those important questions yeah. you know very, very important stuff okay next question mason music 357 which is my buddy jared wants to know after working with countless names in various industries what do you consider your best or most memorable moment ASAP Ant, yeah. ASAP Rocky video, for That's sure. That's a sick video, yeah. Just, just like I said, I thought it was only going to be Ant, and then like half of ASAP Mob yeah. rolls out, and they're yeah. all just like, what are we doing, bro? Yeah. You're the director, tell me what I'm doing. Yeah, and plus, like, you were like, it, that was like your, you know, thing. And that was, well, yeah. That was still only like maybe four or five months living in LA, so it was still like, dipping my feet in the water. Yeah. Shout out Amber Parks, like, thank <laughs> you so much for that. Oh, yeah. So, okay, uh, Patrick Shaughnessy, East Coast D's, wants to know what would be the the ideal industry to be a part of and work with cinematography wise other than the automotive and music industry i think just advertising in general yeah because advertising is always going to be a thing yeah and like now more than ever people are too lazy to read and everyone <laughs> just wants to watch a quick video so i think video advertising is only going to get bigger and bigger so really anybody yeah you know and like you could basically do whatever you want as long as you pitch it which is super cool yeah yeah i mean i would love to do i mean I, End goal is definitely right now car commercials, but not just like rolling shots, like car commercials with a story. Yeah. 
with you a know, concept with that ties into like the brand and stuff. Like yeah. Audi has some of my favorite commercials. Like I don't know if you've seen the prom night one. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The kid doesn't have a date. <laughs> yeah. He like kisses the prom queen. Love that commercial. It's so cool. There's like a Range Rover commercial where this girl leaves her scarf in this dude's car. So he like has his dog sniff it. Yeah. And he's like driving downstairs and like through the city. Like yeah. it's, you know, following his dog. To, stuff like that. Yeah, you know? it's super cool. Not just like rolling shots. Yeah. Um, I feel like commercials like that are a challenge though right because they only they can only be like a certain length for sure and you got to tell a story absolutely and And in terms of like roles on set that's the director coming up with that idea so like i love the whole concept part of directing and like coming up with ideas but when it actually comes to being on set and directing people to do things it's like not my cup of tea so if i could like um JMP, the director I did like Maxo Cream with and T Pain and whatnot. Recently, we've been like coming up with ideas together. Yeah. And then when we're on set, he's so good at just like literally looking like a rapper in the eyes and being like, <laughs> "You need to go do this right now. We got to do blah blah blah." And like, you know, people take him seriously. Yeah. We're like, I'll be quiet with the camera. <laughs> but in the concept stage, we're like both just like yeah, spitballing. You gotta ideas. have someone like that. Yeah. So like, I don't mind directing like that, but not on set. <laughs> Okay, so Andrew Larson uh, wants to know Shut how, up. how do you how do you evaluate and choose between working freelance and working in an agency or even in house, and what tips do you have for people on both sides of the spectrum? Whoa, that's a tough one. It's a tough one. Yeah. yeah. How do you evaluate and choose between working freelance and working at an agency or even in house? So, I mean, I guess they each both have like their pros and cons. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's all about what kind of job you want to have right like, if yeah. you want that security of going to an agency yeah but then you get like short shafted on like the whole getting paid what you're worth sometimes 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 yeah, yeah. i mean the, the big thing i would miss about freelance is like just some of the opportunities you get yeah like i literally got a text today for a potential music video on sunday which is in two days yeah so it's you gotta like, be on your feet with someone. You gotta like I have one dude who says he doesn't answer the phone after five and he freelances. I was like, What are you talking about? Like someone calls you at eleven at night, you gotta pick up the phone. Oh yeah. Like, you're never not working. Yeah. But I feel like at an agency it's more like a nine to five yeah. where like you can go home for yeah. the holidays and not look at your phone. Yeah. And stuff like that. So you gotta kinda of decide what yeah. kind of lifestyle you wanna live. Yeah. And because this shoot on Sunday it means you can't go to Tuner Evo, does that does that happen often? Do you have to choose between like yeah. plans or things like that? Yeah, and there's times where you commit to a gig and then suddenly you get hit up for like something else. Something else that maybe pays twice as much but you're already committed. And does that does and how does that like I'm I'm do you like end up burning bridges or how does that work? I'm sure Or do you find somebody to replace or replace you? or what well I'm sure bridges have been burned but I mean I mean yeah I had one guy who got mad because I wasn't available anymore but it's like dude like I can't always be waiting for yeah. one person you yeah. know so like finding replacements is nice but if it's like somebody who's like yo I gotta shoot in a month are you free and you're like nah I'm booked they're like I, I'll get you on the next one Yeah, you yeah, know so yeah. it's like every situation is unique yeah that's crazy I'm sure that's tough man balancing that out it is, but I mean, like, once you pencil... The, the toughest part, though, is you pencil something in, and you're like, all right, I'm booked this day, and then a day before it, it gets canceled, and someone two weeks earlier hit you up to do something yeah, that day. Yeah, you're just like, oh, you I could have been doing that. Yeah, yeah, so it's like... That's things, man. Yeah, I've been trying to... Like, a, a thing in the industry is, like, when someone books you, they pay you 50% if they cancel, like, before two weeks before the gig so two weeks are closer to the gig oh okay so they cancel like a week before they still got to pay you 50 percent because you potentially lost a gig right or did this yeah, and that because you committed yeah. yeah but a lot of people are like why bro we didn't even shoot anything <laughs> so it's like really hard yeah you know kind of what are what are across. common reasons for stuff like that getting canceled is it like an artist or somebody important on set couldn't make it so or? i was supposed to shoot a video today yeah yeah and that one got pushed to next week because the artist felt like flying somewhere to get new grills. <laughs> and it's like, you can't. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. Man. I thought, it, like, sometimes you think you hear it all, and then it's just like. And then that happens. Someone, and then yeah. somebody needs new grills, and you're just like, okay, that just happened. And like, word. <laughs> all right, I'm free now today. <laughs> Let's do the podcast. Let's do it. Yeah, okay, so I got to ask, man. So, Speed and Stance Meet, your, your Speed and Stance Meet video, which you made four years ago has 3.5 million views I, I think that's like your most viewed your most viewed thing on, I don't know what happened there, how, how did that how did that go viral I have no idea I feel like there was, there's an interesting story behind that or I, you don't even know I have no idea bro I have no idea <laughs> I, I was like whoa wait a minute 
I've had theories. Like one of my theories was a lot of people argue in the comments. Yes, about I was just about to mention the comments. That was like cars, entertaining. None of these cars are, are performance cars. Why is it called speed and stance meet? And I think people just come back to argue. And every time they come back they to view, view, I doubt that's three million people arguing. <laughs> But I don't know, man. Maybe YouTube analytics just kept. Dude, that was like it. I was like, whoa, that's insane. I'm like, whoa too, dude. I have no idea why. <laughs> that's like that. <laughs> All right, so there's a playlist on your YouTube videos on your YouTube channel called A Minute or Less. Tell us about those and how do you go into those versus like your longer work. Um. And, and I was wondering, does that sort of just like happen, or do you go into it knowing you're gonna do that, or like tell it, us about that? It varies. Like I know, I know one or two of the videos on there is like uh, client videos. Yeah. So those are just like, <clears throat> let's do some glamour shots and then some product shots, and yeah. like those end up being a minute or less. And then sometimes it's like. I recorded your car, but I didn't get enough or something. Yeah, yeah. and it's like, oh, I'll make a, a a separate video for you, and it's a minute or less, or like. Yo, I didn't get enough footage to do a full feature, so I'm just gonna do like yeah. a, a minute or less. It's yeah, like, those videos are super cool too, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah of course, dude. All right, so there's a photo you took on your Instagram of, of Neek Lurk at, your, at, at his house with his Ferrari in the garage. What's the backstory behind that? So, oh man, where did we all meet? So I met Jason Overall, who owns Target Trophy. Mm -hmm. I forget where, I think it was maybe at one of his rally meets or something, Yeah, but um, a friend of mine had told him I do video and said we should work together. So he was working on his YouTube channel and he and Neek are like homies. Yeah. So he was like, Neek agreed to do um, a video of his Ferrari. You want to do it? Yeah. So we just went to Neek's house and Neek was like, don't show my house number. I don't oh want my anyone God. knowing where I live. Dude, I bet you he was like super careful about that i'm sure like he doesn't want anyone well he saw this. me taking the photo that i posted yeah. and he was like yo 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 don't show my house number so i like if you yeah. look at the photo you, like i just like um <laughs> and, and that's that's with, like, with with good reason <laughs> yeah but neek's like a super super chill dude oh yeah like i see he gets so much flack for like not shipping stuff yeah i don't know what the reason behind that is i saw recently he did like a massive shipment yeah but he was like a super chill like yeah knows cars like was yeah. into cars before yeah. he had the money or anything yeah and so like, what's crazy is I, I, I'm obviously like you know I, I mean I'm not gonna go too into detail with it, but the guy who does like our merch mm -hmm. does his merch too. Oh, sick. And he also handles like his shipping and and orders and stuff. And I'll just I'm not obviously not gonna like say any more than this, but like dude, the orders he gets are insane. Tons. Insane. Tons. And it's like I, I'm pretty sure that dude has hired like a couple of people to help him out because he was doing it by himself at one point. But that's like no, I've heard numbers thrown insane. around too. It's insane. And it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. Um, and I'm and I and I I like Neek. I love what he's what he's doing, and I really hope he like picks it up and and keeps going with it and like fixes that one like little issue that's like you know so easy to resolve. Because like dude, that like anti-social social club is like massive. It's massive. And it has and the potential to be even more massive. And it's so he doesn't need to change anything. He doesn't no, need to all. come out with designs. Yeah. He doesn't need. To, he just yeah. needs to do collabs in Ex different colorways. Yeah, exactly. It's, amazing. That's, it's crazy. It's the most amazing business model ever. I know. Yeah, I hope. I hope uh, that continues. <laughs> okay, so moving on. I can't. I can I can't interview you without bringing up Crispy and, and uh, Halcyon. Uh, oh, you guys have, yeah, I know you guys have collaborated a ton over the years. Tell us about your friendship with them, and both on a personal and business level, and. Uh, and then the follow up to that is what has been your favorite time with those two? So we're all in a group chat together that we literally talk every single day. Yeah. Sending memes, asking each other opinions on stuff. Just um they're the homies, dude. Like yeah. they're they're the homies for sure. Personal and business. Oh yeah. Um Chris has tried to bring me on a couple raw well builds, but because of scheduling, like yeah. that whole like I'm already booked and then now I'm not booked, shit yeah. like that. Like um, I'm sure I'm sure that'll happen. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. So I mean we, um, I think Acura was the only thing that we've done together, all three of us. Chris and Anthony worked together a lot, and then me and Anthony worked together a lot. Um, I was going to go on that 4GT rally with Chris, but same oh, thing, yeah. scheduling conflicts. Yeah. That was out here too, yeah? It or, was Utah, I think? Oh, okay. I knew it was on the West Coast, but I just like assumed yeah, it, was yeah. like, it was out here. Um, what was the second part? Um, well, what's been your favorite time with them? Just like, you know, oh, H2O man. or... I'm sure Probably it was a SEMA, dude. Yeah? SEMA, yeah. Dude, we just dude did that so was much like the dream dumb team, man. Shit, bro. <laughs> and then when Acura was like, you guys are good, you can go do what you want, we would just go out and just like be dumb. And it was just like so much. Because like Crispy's crazy. Dude, I was kind of bummed that they didn't do that again this year with you guys. Yeah, I know. They had. It's, I mean, it happens, stuff, but, but dude, that was like, that'll always be like one of my favorite like 
things that you guys all did. Yeah. Super cool. Same. So many, so many good memories and so many funny photos on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so man, so life outside of cinematography. Uh, what are some of your hobbies besides, uh, you know, doing videos and cars? Um, I love music, man. Yeah. Like I literally sit in my bed with headphones on for like four hours like, I, and just I'm sit the there same way. and look at related artists and just find music. Like I'm really big into jazz right now. Oh, I'm yeah. really big into house. That's like, tight. um. I'll be honest, dude, like, all my time lately has just been on, like, filming and, like, what's next and yeah, stuff man, like that. Yeah, so man, I, I, I really, respect your grind, dude. It's I don't really have cool. any other hobbies right now. <laughs> dude, that's understandable, man. Like, I that's love eating a big food. hobby. Yeah. Food's great. Yeah. <laughs> Tacos. <laughs> Korean barbecue. Oh, yeah. I almost went, like, vegetarian at one point, and then I was like, wait a minute, no more Korean barbecue, and it was, like, <laughs> a quick a reverse. Yeah. I take that back. You're like, I take it back. <laughs> yeah. So, what's one thing that, that not many people know about you? Um, me and my dad are super into picking mushrooms, like not trippy mushrooms, <laughs> not like go get high I was gonna mushrooms, say, like gourmet, like oh, wow. stuff like that. Yeah. Do you do a lot of cooking or does your dad do a lot of cooking? Uh, I used to, but like now because of my schedule, Uber Eats is like my best friend. Dude, I blow so much money on it. If I showed you like my statements just on Uber, it's Yo, insane. Same. Bro. It's insane. Same. But it's so convenient. It's too convenient. Dude, what's a, what's a little annoying about them, though, is, like, I live in a high-rise on, like, the eighth oh, floor. Oh, so you got to go down every time. No, 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 no. Some of them some of them will come up, and some of them will just be like, I'm right outside, and it's just, like, I'll tip the people a little bit more that come up. Uh, but, yeah, it's, 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 but otherwise, it's so convenient, dude. Yeah. There's so many restaurants. There's so many restaurants, it. dude. It's Good ins- restaurants, too. Yeah, I know. I, lo- I love it, dude. It's so, it it's so awesome. Okay, so moving on, man. If you could make a video about anything you haven't already, what would it be? Like any topic or anything? Um, there's two short films that I'm, well, one's a short film and one's like a mini web series I'm writing right now. Yeah. Um, the short film is about a kid who lives on the East Coast whose friends all moved to LA and they, oh. all, they all do music together. And he's got all these things holding him back, like a girlfriend. And, and he's um, got to decide. He's got to decide. Like his friends FaceTime him and like, yo, I showed someone your beats. They want to meet you, but you got to come out here. Yeah. And like his mom is like not well. So he's like, do I get up and leave or do I like stay and like live the life I'm living so I'm writing that and then I'm writing a mini web series about a group of like car kids oh cool kind of like the rocket power crew yeah and it's also like there's one main character but every character has like development and I kind of want to do like a six episode like mini series that I'm writing pitch that to like Netflix or something dude honestly Netflix and Hulu crazy right now they're willing to buy anything what kind of shows are you into right now oh man i just uh, i waited stranger things i'm sure one night bro one, I know. one night i watched black the mirror uh, my girlfriend's been having me watch black mirror dude halcyon was like all about How's, that you do, he you. was like mentioned <laughs> it like twice and i'm like dude i love that show i haven't watched the fourth season yet but i'm like dude that's the coolest show. dude when we got off the plane he was like you watch a new season of black mirror and i was like i think one episode he was like which one and i was like this <laughs> Let's one let talk about it he's like i watch all of them i was like bruh <laughs> dude that's a good but one. uh i'm a, i watched narcos recently oh, finished man. it Loved did you which see the which seasons you like better first one. First one. First one's my favorite yeah I was kind of bummed when Pablo Oscar Same. Died. He was my favorite character. I know. And his driver, whatever his name was. Oh, was my super, God. I forget his name. I forget his name, too. Dude, that was a, that's a great show. Loved even it. without, like, even after Pablo died, it's still good. Yeah. I mean, it took me so long to give it a chance. I know. But I'm so happy I did. So good. Like, Mindhunter, watched it in one oh, night. Oh, dude. Loved I need... It. Dude, you rem- you reminded me. I started watching that, and then like I just never... Like, I got really busy and stopped. You but I need to finish, finish it, off. Need to yeah. finish it. Have you seen Ozark? So I watched, I went to someone's house and they were watching it and it was just really slow for me. Oh, okay. But I oh, wonder, it picks up. Dude. I wonder if I watch the first episode and like give it a chance. Yeah. I'll like it. Because yeah. that's what happened with Narcos. I tried watching the first episode once and I was like, nah. Yeah. And then I gave it a second chance and I was like, next, next, yeah. next, next, next. You know? Dude, um, so I'm currently really, really late, but I'm watching Breaking Bad right now. It's so good. I watched the first season. You were not into it? I'm into it, but it's just so much, dude. It's like Game of Thrones. It's yeah. like, I'm not I'm about at the to point now where it's just too much up. for me, and I just want it to end because I like hate everybody. Yeah. It's, it's intense. But... I know you're going to get mad down votes for me not being into <laughs> Breaking Bad. But... Great show. And then Sopranos, I watched really late. Dude, I grew up in Jersey. I should have watched I it when what? I was. That's I, shocking. When I was in middle school or early high school everyone would talk about it and i'd be like Psh. and i watched a few episodes recently i was like this show is incredible it's incredible dude incredible. i, I, I kind of wish it not going to do a spoiler alert but i was kind of bummed at the way it ended but last scene and back it was just like the most perfect show yeah. ever 
I also never gave Rick and Morty a chance. What? And then we got Mr. Poopy Butthole over there. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone I know loves it, so I gave it a chance. That's a great dude. show. I watched all of it in it's like not, two days. It's not better than South Park or Simpsons or Family Guy, but it's it's up there. It's crazy. Yeah, just comparing it to like other fan, yeah. funny adult animated films yeah. or shows. All right, so... What you, I, I have to ask, man, just because I mean every person that I interview who does videos, I ask them, but what's your process like for editing? And then also to follow up with that, uh, what's your computer setup like and then what do you do for storage? So uh, what's your pro editing process like? So I like to just dump all the files into the into Premiere yep. and then start to organize everything. I mean, like it all depends on the project. Right. Like for H2O, I'll organize it by feature. So yep. like... Panda, SCI, For, EC10, yeah, yeah. everybody. And then do you I'll, keep it all in the same timeline or do you do different scenes? I change every scene to a different color. Oh, okay. So that way when I'm scrolling, I can you see know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. one, two, one, two, That's one, smart. two. Um, but it depends, dude. Like for music videos, I'll literally drag every single take into it, line up the audio, oh, wow. just pick my favorites from each one, go to the next one, go to the next one, and then yeah. suddenly you have like a video already. That's cool. So it varies. But um, editing setup, I have the 2014 Mac Pro, the trash can. Oh, yeah, yeah. Crispy's got the trash can, yeah, too. Yeah, he does. He I does. think he upgraded the RAM. He did. I haven't done an upgrade yet. What? I think I'm at 32 gigs oh, or something. You got to go up higher. I got to do that, yeah. yeah. I mean, now that I have the red, it's like I need some more RAM, yeah. you know, especially if we're doing 8K, which yeah. is so ridiculous. That's insane. About. Yeah. Dude, 4K kills. Yeah. I can't imagine it. It's... <laughs> <laughs> Twice as bad. It's crazy. <laughs> and then, uh, what do you do for storage? Like, you like, just talk, 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 talk to us more about that. I so, just that. I have a box right there with all those gray boxes in it. I oh use Western Digital Black yep. Drives. How big are they each? They vary. Um, a bunch of them are one terabyte. A bunch of them are two. Okay. Yesterday, one of them finally, not finally, but one of them. <laughs> um, has an issue like whenever I plug it into the reader it's short circuits Ooh. everything do you, have to, do you have to do a recovery or is it not it's at a re recovery center right oh. now but what nothing nothing crazy no it's like I have two copies of H2O 2016 yeah and one of them was on that and then my Euro X video was on that oh which I've posted already so yeah. if it's like a thousand dollars to fix You're like, it's not worth it for yeah, me it's already done it's already online it's already it's online yeah. but I was talking to Sebastian about this yesterday and he's like but bro the memories but like yeah not a thousand dollars for me yeah that's true but yeah um, I had to take a hard drive one time to a place called Micro Center I don't know if you've heard of it I've heard of Micro yeah, Center to, to do a recovery and I was like the memories man that, and I had to pay. I just, I just was like, no price tag on that. But true, dude, that's it's tough, man. True, it's hard to decide. I haven't had that moment yet, though, where I like need a nostalgic trip, and I like pop in a hard drive. Yeah, I usually I know, just right? go to my channel yeah, and like it's, watch a video. Yeah, it's kind of like using your phone to record like fireworks or something. It's like you're not gonna yeah, go back and watch yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But um, because that freaked me out, I ordered two six terabyte drives last night, which oh, is wow. only probably half. I think I have like thirty terabytes of. Oh my god. Drives maybe. Yeah, more. I just got a, a a five. It's like a lease. C drive or something and I was like let's see how long it takes yeah. me to go through that so I'm now going to double back everything so there's two copies of that's everything awesome. that's is, smart man because you never know I mean in school that's what they taught us and I was like nah, nah and then like this. obviously every lesson I learn is the hard way so <laughs> yeah now double back and, don't you hate those life lessons man the yeah. hard ones <laughs> it's alright you come out you come out on top so yeah okay so with the people in your life who have been your biggest influences every, with everything that you do in terms of like personal friends or just yeah like yeah people? yeah personal friends yeah oh man um sebastian rodriguez yeah for sure um the dudes here at porch house literally every day if they're not doing something they start to, you could see them being like i need to <laughs> do something I need a, I need a new client i need something you know yeah um my dad for sure yeah my both my mom and my dad's side came to this country with like nothing. Oh wow! And he's like done very well for someone who's came, come from nothing. So that's that's like I'm sure that was like inspiring. Growing super up. inspiring. Yeah. And he's like that. And like, I see a lot of people nowadays just getting like spoiled. And like, he made sure to never yeah. to make sure that like you basically like you work for what you get and like you appreciate it. You yeah. know, so like that's a good lesson. To I learn. really appreciate that. Yeah, you know, that's that's awesome, man. Yeah, same situation for me as well. So nice. I can totally relate to that. And then outside of personal friends, I, I bring him up all the time. But Eric Ding is the yeah. producer, insane, like probably his biggest fan. Like he's such a huge inspiration to me. That's awesome, man. Okay, so one one last question before we close it up. So uh, you've got an eye for streetwear. Are there any brands you're keeping? 
uh, like like that you're keeping an eye out or that you're into or whatever or any maybe even any that you've like done work with so I know there's a lot of flack against this brand but I am like a diehard v fan yeah, yeah yeah since before all that bullshit um, not bullshit but like since before yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, all yeah. that stuff that went down yeah the video yeah. the video and all that um, think, think it'll make a comeback I think so I think that issue that went down is with a, an individual not with the brand even though he's the guy who started it yeah. I think if you support a brand you should support a brand yeah. like I love like the image behind it and the mindset yeah, yeah. of just like fuck everything yeah and as shitty as it sounds like it was really shitty and unfortunate but with like a lot of stuff just sort of seems to like fade away and I'm sure people will forget about it if it does stay but it's kind of hard to tell because that was a pretty bad video so. I mean I wasn't there I don't know what happened yeah likewise but from likewise. what I saw in the video it wasn't a good move on his yeah, part to absolutely. attack like that yeah. I don't want to talk too much about that yeah likewise I, but I, I do see a lot of people in the music realm still rocking v yeah like likewise Smokey yeah. Margiela shout out just released a new song like about not about v but like the album artwork's got the yeah, V yeah. on it um, yeah I know like Nav still wears it and stuff mm-hmm. like that yeah yeah Cardi yeah. Uzi all mm-hmm. those dudes absolutely um, I love ASAP Guess <laughs> Just because oh I'm like God. a sucker. Have you got, yeah, I remember you told me you had it. I've got three of them. Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to get the last two from yeah. the first season oh, or the yeah. first drop or whatever. Dude, that's like the thing right now. Yeah. <laughs> I've never been like a huge Supreme head. Yeah. But I mean, like, I totally get it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I am. <laughs> I feel that. Yeah. I, don't, I love uh, YSL too. Oh, yeah. 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 So. I'm big into, I've been really big into Palace lately. Like, yeah. I love their stuff. Yeah. I like Palace. I like them. Just like their their image, you yeah, know, like the, the house music skate videos, yeah, stuff like that. Absolutely, their videos yeah. are super cool, and they're like, I feel like they're like, do they're like supreme, but like before, okay. before, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so following up on that, uh, speaking of streetwear, the the Vialone video that that you did with the with, the, uh, with Rodolfo was super interesting and super cool. Uh, what are your thoughts on working in like the fashion industry? Could you ever see yourself doing videos for like a brand? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah have I've you done... have you have you like dived into that yet while you've been out here? Because I know um, streamer is like massive out here. I've done fashion shoots in the past. Like you mentioned, you liked that one shot in my reel of yeah. the three girls yeah. at the train track. Yeah. That was for a clothing brand. And oh, okay. That director Cassandra does a lot of fashion stuff. Like I've worked on an eBay clothing commercial with them. Oh, cool. And. Um, when I was in college, I did like a shoot for Teen Vogue. So like I've worked in the fashion realm, but I think fashion. See, oh man, that's I'm, I almost went on a tangent. I'm not yeah. gonna. But <laughs> like Teen Vogue and like Velone are totally different types of fashion. Oh yeah. Like yeah. Velone, you could show up with like a VHS camera, shoot some dudes. And like, it'll be acceptable. Destroying yeah. a cop car with bats and throw a V on it, and suddenly you got like a great ad for yeah. their. But like Teen Vogue, you got to do like crazy beauty lighting in a studio or something like that. So yeah. like, I don't, I'm not doing this for a check. So I'm not going to like accept a gig for money. Yeah. So like, I would do like v I, w- I would do stuff for brands I'm into is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. You know, like if v was like, help do a, a lookbook with us, I'd be like, hell yeah. <laughs> but like, if somebody else said it and it wasn't something I thought I could do, I won't do it just because maybe it pays a lot. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, so like. I don't know if someone comes to me with a fashion gig. I'll, I'll, Hell yeah! I'll I feel like you would it. kill that, dude. It'd be fun. Yeah. It depends. You know, like, I, I like the whole lookbook, like yeah, realm. Yeah. Or even doing like a video, like you said, just that, like a two field destroyer car, like that, something like that would be. Super I just cool. got a Super Eight camera, yeah. so I really want to shoot some just like oh, dumb stuff. Oh, that'd be so it, cool. Or like know. lighting it on fire or something. See, yeah. like stuff. That's the cool thing. Like stuff like that, you can just go do, and if the brand likes it, you'll get a DM from someone. They'll be like, "Yo, send me this." Yeah, you know. And it's yeah. like, if it's not about the money, then like, just go do yeah, stuff do it for fun. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. That's rad. Yeah, yeah. just got to eat, you know. So it's like not so much time <laughs> yeah, to yeah, yeah. do too much stuff just for fun. Yeah. You know? So, um, just throwing this in there. Tell us about what you have like going on here with like your two friends and like the thing that you guys have going on because I think it's super cool. So Cody and Andrew, when they were in college, started a production company called Porch House Pictures, and they have a bunch of really big clients like Shelby American, RM Sotheby's, um, El Silencio Tequila, and whatnot. And we met a few years ago, and I've been their like go-to DP. But literally right before we started this interview, I like signed, like agreeing to like be 
part of the production company. Oh, cool. Not exclusively, but be yeah, like part of, yeah, a in name the mix. Yeah, yeah. in the mix officially. That's awesome. Congrats. So <laughs> thanks for all my hype. Like, That's awesome. It, it's, it's, it was there, but it was never like official, in writing yeah, official. Yeah. So now it is. That's and cool. like, this is our office. And um, this is the first time we're, we are saying this, but we're actually building a camera car. Oh, wow. Um, That's right. Probably. Here's Cody. I'm literally dropping the camera car right now, yeah. like right as you walked in. Wow, look at that timing. Yeah, so we're, we're building a camera car, which basically um, we're getting this this equipment called the um, the black arm. Okay, yeah. It's basically a stabilization arm that you attach a gimbal to. Oh, wow. So it goes car, mounting points, black arm, gimbal, camera. Wow. So we're buying a car specifically to for be that, yeah. specifically for you guys that. gonna like brand it and stuff. We are, yeah. yeah. So we're gonna do like um like a wrap maybe or we're gonna probably wrap it. I hate flat black, but we're gonna wrap <laughs> it just because when you're shooting cars, there's no reflections or anything. Right. Dude, that's like the smartest thing ever. So we have a bunch of brands like Shelby and some other people on board to just help um kind of just talk us through the yeah. best way to mechanically like choose these mounting points yeah and do stuff like that that's rad man and it's gonna be huge cool man awesome so dude i'm all out of questions man and i just wanted to like close it out with just asking you if you had any like closing thoughts or shout outs or just anything that you want to say man it's like I'm leaving it all up to oh, you oh man bro <laughs> We've been chilling. I know. It's been a lot. It's been a good amount of time. <laughs> oh damn. I guess um I did a lot of shout outs already. But yeah, shout out mom and dad. Cause if they forced me to do something that wasn't crazy like filming, yeah. I wouldn't be doing this. Right? Like they were like They let you follow your passion. Well yeah, they grinded doing what they did to let me follow my passion. Mm -hmm. So like gotta always appreciate that. Oh yeah. And um I guess shout out everyone who hit me up with questions. Like, I yeah, appreciate your that interest. that was super cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, I don't know, shout out everybody. Hell yeah. Love. Universal love. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Dude, this has been fun, man. Um, glad we finally got to do this. Yeah, Thanks dude. for having me in your studio. Super oh, cool. Thanks for having me, bro. And uh, yeah, this has been uh, Christian Loza with How It's Done Podcast and with Mike Kozil. Uh, we're out. Peace. Deuce. <laughs> That was tight. That was dope, bro. <laughs> Damn, I just missed time. That was like two minutes. <laughs> How long were we talking for, bro? One twenty-seven. Oh, damn. Is that crazy? Literally just under an hour and a half. I'm, I'm wondering what my...